Hello lovely people from the devildom, we have the part 3, after some months, oops. I hope this video doesn't crush your poor little hearts like the last one, but you'll only know if you are brave enough to go through the whole thing. If you don't understand what is going on, I'd recommend watching the first parts and then come back, link in the description. Without anything else, up to the video. The few days after the funeral were the darkest for the brothers. Each one grieving their own way, but the most affected of them all was Belfi, as the moon cannot shine without the sun's light. Belfi was curled in Beale's bed, the scent of the redhead still lingering on the pillows. Soft knocks were heard on the door and MC got in the room with a cart of food. Belfi, you didn't touch your breakfast again. I'm not hungry. Sad Belfi noises. I know, but you must at least have a little to stay strong. Worried MC noises. MC carefully approached Belfi's curled up form, sitting next to him and gently petting his head, placing a little tin next to his bed. Luke sent these cookies just for you, he knows they're your favorite, he thought they might cheer you up. I said I'm not hungry? Now fudge off. Angry Belfi noises. Belfi growled at MC, pushing them out of bed as his eyes filled up with tears, his hands burning due to the charm protecting MC. MC fell to the ground with a dry thump and looked at Belfi with sadness, their eyes widening at the look of his hurt hands. I'm sorry, MC, sobbing Belfi noises. MC slowly gets up, tears in their eyes as they rubbed their belly. Right where Beale's mark used to be. I know you're hurting, Belfi. Believe me, we all do. But the others are hurting too, and not because Beale died means you will let yourself die as well? Crying MC noises. MC then storms out of the room, leaving Belfi feeling even worse than before. Meanwhile, on the underground catacombs, Lucifer was sitting next to Beale's burial, and Cerberus whined slightly. On his lap. I couldn't protect him, Serbi. I failed him. Crying Lucifer noises. Cerberus tried his best to confront his master, but then growled when he heard faint steps on the halls. Barbados, what are you doing here? How did you get here? Master Diavolo used his time-stopping abilities for me to get here safely. I wanted to see how you and your brothers were holding up, Lucifer. Lucifer sighs. Taking at face value what the butler said. Not good at all, Belfi refuses to come out of his room. Asmo comes to me at night and cries himself to sleep on my shoulder. Satan hasn't said a word since the funeral, while Levi and Mammon are doing their best to look strong for our other brothers but I can see how torn apart they are as well. Lucifer looked fragile as well, Barbados reached out to touch Lucifer's shoulder to confront him, but Cerberus growled at the butler. Cerberus? What's wrong boy? It's Barbados, you know him. Confused Lucifer noises. Barbados took a few steps away as the hellhound barked dangerously at him. Cerberus? Stop it, that's an order. But Cerberus didn't listen, jumping, and grabbing the butler's coat. Bad dog, Cerberus. Down, Barbados managed to wiggle out of his coat and get away from the hellhound. Cerberus shook the coat by itself, two of its heads still attentive to Barbados' every move. Lucifer looked extremely angry, ready to punish Cerberus for his disobedience when a soft clack was heard from something falling from Barbados' coat. Lucifer's eye widened as he picked up with shaky hands the old wand. This. Why do you have this, Barbados? It's. Not what it looks like, Lucifer. I had this dreaded thing under lock and key at the palace for a reason? Furious Lucifer sounds. Solomon asked to study the celestial wand some days ago, but he claims it was stolen from him. This wand was made out of the arrow that killed my sister? Why would you even tell him you had it? I didn't. I would never betray your trust like that. He already knew about it. I should have never let Diavolo make this cursed thing. Master Diavolo only intended it to be used as a defense against angels if needed. What was the one's name? Oh right. Angel Slayer. I'm afraid to inform you that the investigation we've made suggests that the culprit must have been near when the attack started. We are trying to trace its magic signature but the attacker must have very powerful magic to hide it so carefully. Lucifer stared at the butler with mixed emotions in his eyes. Then Mammon comes running down the crypt, heavy tears on his eyes. Lucifer, quick, it's MC. The three demons quickly bolt upstairs, fearing the worst. Asmo was carrying MC, whose clothes were filled with blood. Levi was cleaning the floors from the red stains and Satan was throwing a bunch of cookies into the fire. What happened here? Gasping Lucifer sounds. 
Asmo looked up at Lucifer with an absolute panic expression as he cleaned MC's unconscious face. I came to grab a snack and found MC vomiting blood before passing out. I heard Asmo screaming and the rest came down running. I ran to get you and Satan began using his magic to cure MC. The cookies were laced with molten dragon scale. Powder and frog's breath, making the poisonous powder. Good thing none of us ate them, where did these come from? I'm not sure, but I am glad scale powder is only lethal to demons. Still, it's pretty toxic to humans still, we should take MC to a hospital. I agree, that amount of blood is alarming. We must make sure that MC won't have permanent damage to their body. No, we are not leaving anyone in. Here. Someone laced those cookies and could attack any moment. Let's call a doctor to come here then, I'll call Master Diavolo to make sure he's aware of what happened. Barbados vows to the brothers, looking at the wand in Lucifer's hand before leaving. He takes out his DDD and calls someone. Luke, I need to talk to you about the cookies I helped you make for the brothers. MC is taken to their room, the brothers taking turns to make sure MC was still breathing until the doctor arrived. Once the doctor left and made sure MC wouldn't get worse, the brothers sigh in relief, emotions on the thousand mile per hour. I think we should all sleep together tonight. Just to make sure everyone is safe. Belfi won't leave Beale's bed though. It's even worse than Levi on his normal days, Belfi. Didn't come to help MC when they screamed. I don't blame him for being depressed, but we must make sure that depression doesn't eat and destroy him. For now, everyone go get your pajamas and whatever you'll need to be staying in one room until further notice. But Lucifer. No buts, Levi. We are not risking for the next attack to be a successful one. Growling Lucifer noises. I will see you in the twins' bedroom in 10 minutes. Asmo helps Mammon prepare things for MC and they quickly move to Belfa's room. Look at him, he's deep asleep. Let him be, I wouldn't question if he cried himself to sleep like you, there's even drool in his mouth. I call dibs on Belfa's bed. N.O.P., MC gets the bed, they are trying to get better, you idiot. I can share a bed with MC. Don't even think of it. Annoyed. Levi noises. Let's bring a couple of mattresses from our rooms and spread them around. Lucifer gently laid MC in bed and smiled when he saw the empty plate of food next to Belfi. He leaned and placed a gentle kiss on the youngest head. But his eyes widened when he noticed the little crumbs around Belfi's mouth. Mammon? Quick! Get help! Belfi wasn't breathing, so Lucifer quickly tried using his magic to save his youngest. Satan quickly ran into the room and after realizing what was going on, he used a more physical method and did CPR. Come on, Belf. You can't die on us. Not you two. Lucifer was crying and Satan was trying to bring air back to his lungs. It was in vain though, by the time the emergency paramedics arrived, Belfi was gone. He didn't suffer, Lucifer. The powders. Effects took him the moment he took a bite. A cry of despair filled the devildom as the moon's light was no more since the moon can't shine without the sun. Meanwhile, the demon hunter smiled when the cry shook the earth. Two down, five more to go. The sirens were roaring outside the house of lamentation as Asmo was now the youngest of the family. I hope you enjoyed the video, now shout out to Light Rain A. Carey Shan for their lovely comment on the last video. Have a nice day lovelies and check the channel for more mini stories. Click on one of the videos that are suggested right now. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until the next.